Hey guys, I'm excited to talk to you about not one, but two, I guess this was good one, but two, <laughs> uh, items that I've actually released for, for Scrimba, which is JavaScript stuff. So one is a email series, and another is updates to a previously existing um, JavaScript course I have on there, an introduction course. And I want to talk a little bit about them, and a little bit about creating content and course materials and things like that because I know a lot of you guys are interested in it. Let's go ahead, take a look. I want to thank our sponsor, ProxyCall. ProxyCall offers a series of tools for making scraping and crawling websites easy without getting blocked thanks to their artificial intelligence element. They offer crawling and scraper APIs, lead finders, proxy back connects, and much more, all at a very competitive price with 24-7 support, so you always have someone there available to answer your questions. You can use coupon code Dylan underscore Israel and allow you to get started today for free with up to 5,000 requests and no credit card required. Check them out at proxycrawl.com. So for those of you who don't know, I actually have three courses on Scrimba that I've uh, built with them uh, back in the day. And they actually asked me to update my introduction to JavaScript one. And we've added a bunch of more challenges. That's probably the largest thing that we added. So if you like challenges, which you should, because that's really one of the great ways to learn, we added a whole bunch of them. We also added uh, a few re refilms or I guess rescreens. Is that a thing? Uh, so we rescreencast re a few things. And then... What's going on, baby girl? Chill. And then, <laughs> and then um, we also added some additional sections. So you can check this out in the description below. And another thing that I recently released with them, and this is pretty cool, and I really like this, is they wanted to do an email series. And so they did a seven-day JavaScript email series. And cool thing about this is it's very practical of like, hey, what are some you know, issues that you might solve or sort of basic logic algorithm problems. Um, so if you sign up and then you'll start getting emails about it, you can uh, use the link below and give you an idea of how it's set up. I took a little bit of extra time to uh, to do some presentations. So it's broken up with a introduction. Hey, this is what we're going to do. And you'll see it like right here. We have some instructions. And not only that, we also, or I should say I also, uh, went and I set up a test suite using Jasmine so you can have this you can take a TDD approach to it or you know just use it as some help to see your actual output with the test and um, the second portion is me going through it but the idea here is oh hey here are some hints of how you know methods that I use so you can get more comfortable using them uh, but I want to share that with you I'm pretty excited by that uh, but if you're interested in any of those there are links in the description below now one thing a lot of people are very interested in, in in software engineering, I think, is creating courses, right? So, for those of you who don't know, I create courses, right? Uh, it's a it's a side project of mine on top of YouTube. So I do like free courses, or I do I get cons I get some consulting work. I'm right now working on two additional projects for Scrimba. I'm wrapping one up for LinkedIn Learning, and then I have my own Angular course, which. No, no disrespect to Scrimba or LinkedIn, but I'm ecstatic about my you know, like when I when I find the time to build my own course, I'm it's something I'm always excited about. So like I'm building the 100 Angular challenge, and like just this weekend I built a bottom sheet component, I built a skeleton loader component, I built a um, a copy directive. Like I'm just having a blast, man. I'm building we're building 100 different things in it, but um, I want to talk to you a little bit about you know. There, there's a ton of different ways of creating courses and the way that I've done it typically is I have a, a general game plan, a syllabus of what it is I'm trying to do. And I think a lot of times, for, I, I'm sharing this so like, you know, everyone's thing is different, right? And I think Brad coined this term, or at least it, it stuck with me because I think him and I sort of work a little bit similarly where we sort of have organized things up here and very unorganized things in the actual world. <laughs> and he uses the term organized chaos, or he did one time. Uh, and I've always really liked that term, and I felt like it's a good description of how I function. And the the thing is, is like I do very high level. Like I write a list of like 50 of the 100 things I'm going to build, and I figure out the next 50. And I don't really go like 
oh, this is like, for instance, this video. I just pulled up three links, and I was like, cool, I'll just talk for ten minutes about this, this, and that. And there's not a script. There's not a lot of editing. It's very raw, and hence the chaos. And that's sort of how I, I go about creating my courses. And what I would say if you're interested in it is figure out what way you work best. You may not get it right this, the, um, the first time or the second time. But for me, I usually like to pretty much just do some code examples, figure out that, then film it. It's that simple. And consistency in anything I do is how I succeed, right? So every day I try to do one video of my course. And, um, you know, before you know it, in 150 days, you do 100 of your components and the 50 other supporting videos. That's a long time, without a doubt. And, you know, some days I don't do, some days I do zero. Some days I do three, four, five on the weekends, right? And it's sort of, but the goal is to always do one a day. And what I found is that if you simply take that one step forward with your course uh, or anything in life, really, this is the approach I've taken to life, uh, you'll find out that you're one step farther ahead than 99% of people because most people, they, they do 10 steps at once and then they never take a step again and those 10 steps don't pay off. Um, but having an idea of what it is you want to create, and one thing I, I would highly recommend for those of you who are really interested in this is that figure out a way to make a course that's backwards compatible. And what I mean by that is um, I've actually had two Angular courses that were project-based that I took down. And they were fun. They were good courses. The issues with them was that um, because all the code was so intertwined in a framework, and frameworks are very uh, fluid, although Angular has sort of slowed down on some of these things, that it made it, it made it it made it so I had to refilm some of that and you know it's kind of hard because now you have to get which videos are out of sync and then how how do I update the code examples all that sort of stuff and so like the two other courses I created after, after that was 100 algorithm challenge things that aren't going to change logic puzzles algorithms preparing for that whiteboard interview and the 100 front end interview questions challenge where now they're all sort of stuff that is more uh, more static um, important but static and the idea there being that oh hey cool um, we have these hundred things that are not interconnected the issue before was a hundred videos all sort of subsequent based on that and you know trying to figure out how to update that and that's sort of how I came about the hundred angular challenge was I want to do an angular course I'm a, I'm an expert in angular at this point I've been doing about three and a half four years I can always get better but this is something that I can provide value on and I can make an excellent course and so I said, okay, cool, let me go and figure that out. And this is what I came up with. It's the largest course I've ever built, but I'm sticking with this 100 theme. So if you guys see any courses of mine coming out, it's always, if it's not a, if it's a paid course, it's always going to be 100, <laughs> 100 something. Uh, I figure I always want to like give you value because I still feel kind of weird um, selling something on the internet. Like, is that, is that like, I, I don't know, like, that's why also I only charge like $10 a course. It's not only to get it out to the masses so people can do it and I can sort of build my my empire. No, uh, build my brand. Uh, um, but also, uh, you know, I would I would feel like I, I have some sort of pride about putting something out and people paying money for it. And there's a little bit of me that'd be like, because I, I, I would feel comfortable with all my courses charging $100 for them, but I don't. Because there's a slight part of me that, because I still, I think you're getting that much value, honestly. Uh, when you go 100 whiteboard problems, 100 this, you're paying a, a dollar a video, okay. And it's going to help, all of these are designed to help, those two specifically designed to get you a job. I could get by that, but like part of me is like, one, not everyone's going to be able to get it. Um, but $10 is cheap enough that anyone can get it. And two, like I, I you know, some courses sell for $500,000, $5,000, whatever. There's as the price goes up for me at least I feel like the level of responsibility goes up and like just giving you the videos and saying good luck and the code examples I I feel like I have more ownership of you being successful with the course rather than um, you just purchasing materials at like a ten dollar fifteen dollar price range and um, that's another thing to consider is what is it how invested do you want to be in the course and like you know like Eric for instance has his view course where it's a higher price point. But also he's hands on with that, like every week, live streams and, and, and Q and A's and things like that. <clears throat> and for me, my most important resource is my time, like everyone else's. And I'd rather be doing that on 
other things than maybe mentoring and and like q and a's and that's why like my mentoring is typically pretty expensive you know it's 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 about two and a half x whatever my hourly rate is if you were to break down the salary and the idea for it is it has to be financially worth it for me to take time out of my life where I'm spending on other things, whether it's w hanging out with the girlfriend or whether it's building my own course, that it has to make sense. And so when you're doing this and you're building a course, make sure it makes sense for you and make sure you find what works for you. And you may have to jump around, uh, but there's not a one size fits all. And I, 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 I want people in pretty much in their life in general to to understand that if you do you'll you'll find yourself be a little bit more successful but with all that being said guys um hopefully in two months i'll have that course out it's uh it's about a little over halfway done pretty excited but make sure you check out the two scrimble ones that i've put out i hope you enjoy it and um you know let them know let them know your boy dylan sent you so that uh they keep throwing some work my way i'll see you guys next time oh like subscribe share i'm on that hashtag road to 100,000, man i really want that silver play button i'll see you guys next time bye Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.